Hello, everybody. You are tuned into HCAM Sports Talk Live. We are here with Hopkinton Hillers varsity hockey head coach, Chris McPherson. Coach McPherson, how's everything going and uh, how's the team doing? Uh, things are going pretty well. Uh, you know, we had a little shutdown for a little bit there, but we're uh, back in action and looking forward to our first game in a couple weeks on Wednesday. The team's doing pretty well, two and one so far. Um, a good win, a tough loss, and a good win. So hopefully we're, we're trending more with the good wins. Absolutely. It was a great win uh, in your last game against uh, Westwood. And you had a good win in one of the games against uh, Norwood as well. Uh, but I thought after a tough eight to one loss against Norwood, it was, it was a great rebound win against a talented uh, Westwood team. Uh, can you talk about the uh, talent on the team this year? I know you lost some key pieces from last year's roster, but uh, I think this team is, has some great talent and uh, can certainly do some uh, good things for the rest of the season. Yeah. I, I think that, um, you know, there's definitely been an adjustment period, you know, losing some, you know, some very, very talented players, you know, obviously uh, top score of all time. And, you know, I, I would say we probably had the best line in the state last year, um, as far as, you know, division two and three with, uh, with that senior group there. But uh, some kids have definitely stepped up this year. And some, a lot of kids have a lot of different roles, more expanded roles. And, you know, the, They've, they've done a good job so far and we just need to, you know, the kids come to the rink every day, you know, working hard to get better. And, you know, you never know what, what's going to happen after a loss like that eight to one loss that we had there. And, um, you know, they turn the page the next day in practice and kids are ready to go in that next game. And I was very, very proud of that response. Like, like you said, that was a great response. It certainly was. Uh, now I know we had this little two week pause on the season, uh, but, Game should be happening this week. I can't, well, I can't imagine the team was able to practice too much. Did you give them any homework to do to get ready for the rest of the season? Yeah, they. I asked them to watch the Westwood film and uh, put, put some pointers out there, some things to look at specifically, uh, you know, just what we're doing on the four checks, um, you know, D zone coverage, things like that. Uh, how can we improve the power play? Also gave them some off-ice uh, off training to do put together a couple of workouts for them and um, we'll see today. Hopefully we'll come back in some good shape. You know, we're right back on the ice today. So we got to get a lot of touches and get those hands back together, get the feet going again and also work teams, you know, the, the team concept work in the second half of the practice because we'll be right down in Medfield in two days. So it's going to come pretty quick. So a lot of reps today. And again, uh, you know, pretty much splitting it up with a lot of teamwork too. So. Any thoughts on uh, this Medfield team heading into a couple contests with them? Oh, they're always strong. I mean, ever since I've started, they've always been one of the top Division II teams in the state. Um, you know, always battled with them. Um, you know, my first couple of years, they pounded us pretty good. But, you know, since then, we've, we've been able to hang with them and had some good wins against them. Uh, I don't see that, you know, th th their level of, of play uh, dropping from the past couple of years. They're going to be very hard to play against. And, you know, looking at this, some of the results recently, they've had some pretty good success after the, after the first week. So they're trending in the right direction. Yeah, there's certainly always a, a great uh, competitive team in the TVL. And, of course, they're in that Division I bracket, so they get a lot of the tough D1 teams. Uh, so with the COVID-19 protocols, uh, how has it been adjusting? And uh, what has the hardest part been? I know there's not many rule changes and things like that, but uh, has anything been difficult to adjust to this season? Well, obviously, uh, lots and lots of different changes here, you know, having to keep in mind the kids that put the masks on, um, you know, the, the situation with the, with, with, with the benches is, is tough in games. You know, we, if one group comes off, we got to shuffle them all the way down. If they're not the next group up, then we got to have another group come on over and trying to social distance on the benches. Um, it's been fairly difficult, um, but I thought we did a much better job of it last game. Hopefully that, that continues. As far as practices go, you know, we're trying to spread them out as much as we can. We're so used to all being, being in tight when we're going over, you know, drills on the board or going over uh, concepts like the four check and uh, you know, D zone, things like that, that we need to, we need to spread them out a little bit more. 
Uh, so we have to talk louder, <laughs> but we have a mask on too, so we have to talk even louder. But um, no, I think that, um, not, like you said, not many rule changes. Um, that being said, we're doing the 22 and a half minute halves, which is definitely different than what we've done in the past, close to three, three 50 minute periods. Um, you know, it seemed like that last game that we played, they 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 blew the whistle on that scrum rule more than than they they had in the first two games. So I, I think it's I think one thing that we're having a tough time adjusting to is you know it's just um, sometimes it seems like some some officials will let more go. That's all. It's not a knock on the officials. I know they're they're having a very difficult time trying to. Uh, is, is that a scrum? Is that not a scrum? Is it is that fourth person going into there or? And we did notice, like I said, last game that they were blowing the whistle a lot quicker than the first two games. So I guess it'll be the game situation to see how, how all that, that plays out. But I thought both teams adjusted to that relatively well last game uh, ourselves in Westwood. Yeah, I'd imagine it's uh, pretty difficult for the officials since the rules not really specific. It pretty much says break up a scrum. So it's kind of left up to interpretation. Um, but it seems like uh, the players are adjusting uh, to that well and uh, I, I think as the season goes on they'll continue adjusting to uh, all the COVID-19 uh, protocols well but I'm curious and I'd imagine this is a difficult part of it how are the players adjusting to not being able to use the locker rooms yeah no it's definitely different uh, you know they come to the come into the rink already dressed except for their their gloves helmet and skates so uh, um, you know then they get in and we they have to sit at every other seat uh, on benches just outside the, the playing surface at the rink. And so it's been an adjustment, but they've done pretty well. They definitely have, and, you know, still, we still have to remind them sometimes, you know, you know, you're a little too close there, move over a little bit, please. Um, but they've, they, they, they've, I, I feel like they've taken it seriously, which is making it easier for you know, coach O'Connor and myself. Has there been any changes in the way you, have practices due to the COVID-19 situation? Any uh, changes uh, with what you have to do or pr procedure wise? Um, you know, um, one thing that we have to do at, at the beginning of practice is just make sure we take attendance, um, which is a little different in the past. Uh, you know, just, you know, I guess with contact tracing, if anything did happen. Uh, but other than that, you know, once we once we get, get through that, we're pretty much, not many changes at all. You know, we get we get our drills in. We do our our skill work early, then do our team stuff second half. And uh, you know that that has much been much of a change with that. Now we kind of have to try to separate them in the lines when we when we do our uh, some of our drills. So some drills might be a little bit higher in the zone to enable some social distancing. That's been the toughest part, actually. I would say it's just on the ice trying to keep them socially distanced when they're not used to it. It's, it's just right. so, so different than anything they've ever had to do in their lives especially since it's a contact sport. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> uh, so against uh, Westwood, uh, Colin Norad was tremendous in net. Uh, can you talk about what it's been like to coach him uh, throughout his Hiller's career and how he has come along throughout his years in a Hiller's uniform? Uh, yeah, what a, what, a nice, uh, what a nice story that is, uh, Colin. He, you know, last year, I, you know, I was looking ahead and saw that we – didn't really have much in the pipeline for goaltenders. And uh, he was a JV player for two years as a forward. I played a little bit of D2. And uh, before the season started, I kind of identified him because he's a strong lacrosse goaltender as someone that I just wanted to throw it out at him. He asked him if he wanted to play some goalie. And um, he, you know, he took the challenge, which I was you know, very happy that we definitely needed somebody coming into this year uh, as we only have two goaltenders in the whole system. And he's done a tremendous job. His improvement from last year, this year is remarkable, especially, you know, thinking about, you know, the shutdown last spring where, you know, I mean, I know that's his lacrosse time, but he couldn't really get in the ice to do like you know, any of the goalie clinics and things like that. Uh, but once he was able to get in the ice this fall, uh, he, I know he was doing it. I know our other goaltender, uh, Jack Lang was also there with him um, doing, doing a lot of the, the goalie clinics and things like that. And uh, just showing, just improved so much uh, compared to last year where he was obviously it was his first time playing goalie last year. Um, but he's uh, he's a nice little groove right now. And, uh, you know, really just really, really good teammate for everybody, really hard worker. Um, 
it doesn't say much, but when he speaks, you know, people listen because, you know, he's one of those types of kids that, you know, you, you, you really want to listen to those kids that really like put the effort in and, you know, do the right things. And he's one of those kids. And, you know, he's going to be going to Springfield College next year to play lacrosse. And I'm uh, really, really happy for him that he got into his first choice. And uh, like I said, good success story for Colin, that's for sure. Yeah, he certainly is. Uh, is he liking playing goalie more than forward? I never really asked him that question, but <laughs> with the groove he's in right now, I, I certainly would think that he would be. He's got to be feeling pretty good about himself. He's uh, I think so. I think so. Two, two and a half games, and he's only given up two goals against some, some really high-powered competition. So, uh, Yeah, he seems comfortable between the pipes. Uh, so uh, you got Pavit Mara and Joe Carazza in their sophomore seasons. And they have contributed heavily uh, so far this year. And I think those are two players to watch uh, going into the future years as well. Uh, can you talk about what it's been like to coach those guys and their contribution so far? Yeah, a couple of sophomores who, um, you know, are getting, you know, major minutes for us, you know, on power play, penalty kill. Um, you know, we've, we've run two lines this year more than we have in the past. Typically we've run three. Um, but, you know, these kids have, uh, showing that they can keep up with the stamina of, you know, going out there every other shift if you need them to. And, uh, you know, two good players. You know, Joe's a real tough kid. I know he's a football player too. Um, and Pavit's a real, real skilled player. Um, and they real, they, you know, they're friends. You can tell they complement each other really well. They seem to know each other's on where they, where they are on, on, on the ice. And uh, they really, really come to, have a nice bond, you know, so far this season. That's for sure. Yeah, they, they've been uh, terrific to watch this year. I see uh, a lot more contributions in future years for those two. Uh, so how has it been uh, scheduling wise this year for practices and ice time and things like that? Has it been more difficult? Um, it hasn't been difficult, I think, because it, there's less there's less teams you know, practicing. Um, and then they still have seven rinks open up at, at the sports center. So we've been pretty much getting, you know, our normal ice times after school. Uh, so that really hasn't been a problem. Um, yeah, no, there, there really has been a scheduling issues to date. I mean, we've had, we've had some, we had to flip flop a few things. We've helped out. Uh, I think the girls team, we had to, we got them a, a game. We gave them some ice for a game. Then we're going to get some ice for our, our, G, our JV team gave them some, some ice time or, they gave up on Monday, but they're going to take a Thursday. So a uh, little, little bit of different scheduling there. But for the most part, the rink's been great. They've been right on. Um, they have some new managers up there. Unfortunately, uh, the, the general manager for since the beginning uh, passed away this, this past uh, fall, uh, West Tuttle. But the, the, the people that have taken his place have done a great job communication-wise and uh, you know, setting us up with our typical ice times. That's terrific. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, cause I'm sure, uh, well, I know for a fact in some other sports, it's certainly, uh, been difficult, uh, but fortunately you have, you play at, um, a facility that has many ranks. So that's always a good thing. Uh, so it's been great to see the kids on the ice, but unfortunately it is a shortened season this year. Um, are there any oppor opponents not on your schedule this year that you're especially going to miss? I always like playing Medway, um. You know, that's always a, a really, um, you know, intense, intense game that we, we had with them. Uh, and we obviously back in, back in the day, we always played them two times a year. Uh, we're down to one now that the Tri-Valley large and small have split, but the, that's definitely one team that yeah, we're, we're missing this year. They're, they're very strong squad too. Um, the, the Martha's Vineyard tournament, you know, we've gone to that the past couple of years. So that's, that, that one's tough. That, uh, that one stings a little bit more than some of the other ones because, you know, it's a good, good getaway for the team. Uh, you know, we get to get away and you know, bond, you know, it's always a good bonding trip right before the playoffs start. Um, so I know that's one that the, that the players as well as other coaching staff is definitely going to miss this year. And then the Metro West Daily Cup, which is always right, um, right around the holidays there, you know, between Christmas and New Year's. Yeah, that was obviously shut down this year too. So, uh, Tough to miss that one too. Uh, so Medway and the tournaments, that's, those are the two big ones that you know, come to mind. Yeah. Med Medway and Hopkinton's a great rivalry in really any sport. 
Um, and it's funny because they say the same thing in basketball. When I, when I asked uh, some of the basketball captains and coaches, who are you going to miss this year? They say Medway. Uh, but who knows? Maybe you'll uh, end up adding them because I know some TVL large teams are filling a slot with perhaps a TVL small team. So maybe you'll see Medway this year. I guess uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Uh, but you got nine seniors on the roster this year who will certainly be missed. A lot of talent will be graduating after this season. But uh, how do you feel the future of Hiller's hockey is looking? I think there's some uh, great young players to look forward to. Yeah, it's a pretty deep uh, sophomore class. Um, you know, I think that they'll, you know, we'll, we'll be, you know, building around them the next couple of years, that's for sure. Uh, you know, I, I feel like I have a pretty good beat on some of the uh, younger kids, you know, because I teach at Hopkins School. So I know all the kids that, that have come through. And I'm pretty sure the seventh grade class is pretty deep. Uh, I'm not sure about the eighth grade, but uh, I, but I definitely know seventh grade's got a lot of players. Uh, of course, you never know who's going to come. You know, you obviously cross your fingers that everyone comes, but that, that hasn't happened. Um, uh, we have had good success with keeping kids, but this, this freshman class this year, um, there's a lot of talent that did not come. So we're hoping for the future that players do stick around. You know, we feel like we have a great product here. And um, I think we'll be fine as we move forward. Well, coach, you've done a tremendous job with this program. They're always um, in the mix every single year in the tournament. We'll certainly miss the tournament this year. Uh, maybe not those long trips to the Cape, but <laughs> we'll certainly uh, miss the tournament. <laughs> what was that? That's our second home that <laughs> Gallo is. down and born. <laughs> it is. And you guys have had a lot of success there. That's for sure. Uh, but we are looking forward to hopefully many more games to come in the future. And uh, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Well, Tom, thank you very much for having me. And, uh, you know, as usual, I, we, we really, not just myself, but all the athletics, uh, we really appreciate what, what HCAM does as far as, uh, you know, getting our games out there to the people, especially this year where, you know, our away team, teams that were playing from the road can't can't even come to the games or anything like that. And you've, you've done a great service for everybody. So we really appreciate that. Just want to let you know that. Well, we love covering uh, sports and, and especially uh, hockey. It's always a great time. And uh, it's our pleasure to provide the games for the community. I can't imagine what it's like being a family member or a parent, not being able to go to the games. Fortunately, they do allow some family members to go, but there are, we do know from the crowds that the Hillers usually get, there are many more people that would like to be there. So we are happy to do it. Great. Well, thanks again, Tom, for having me. I really appreciate it. And we'll thanks. see you Wednesday. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, coach. And best of luck against Medfield.